paperwork, there is a, a chance that a person, uh, that someone's reflection might change into something else, either another face or something else. This is Obsidian Mirror. Okay. And there's a certificate here. It says that you've just obtained ethnic Obsidian Mirror. It was made by hand by artisans in Teotihuacan, Ciudad de Dioses. En el estado de México, México. Oh, okay, there's some information here. Okay, I'm gonna use that later. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. This is a really nice pouch. It's got a, a really nice feel to it. It's got like a nice, it's a nice feel to it. Wow, it's actually thicker than I, wow, wow, look at that. It's quite thick. It's thicker than I thought it would be. It's also incredibly smooth. Wow, this is beautiful. So here's here's my obsidian mirror. Looking in the mirror. Okay, I'm actually walking barefoot. We just had two days of rain. Really nice. So here's actually the mirror reflecting. I'm not really holding it perfectly or anything, but how stunning, absolutely stunning. I have a, a cloth that is like for cleaning reading glasses and I've been using it to keep it clean. It comes with a pouch and the pouch is nice. It's got this nice grip um, material on the outside and then on the inside it's like felt and uh, it's a nice way to store it. It's perfect. It's perfectly smooth and beautiful. Um, I've tried looking in at indirect lighting and I'm here and I'm looking and what starts to happen is my reflection disappears and it becomes fuzzy and I notice mostly like it starts from the bottom and it comes to the top and my face becomes a blur and I don't think my eyes are necessarily like what's going on with my eyes? Are they going out of focus? They're just maintaining a certain type of focus. See, like right there? It's basically like... But like right now I'm looking at my... There's my reflection, right? Clearly. And then there's a certain point at which a person focuses. Like right there. Where the reflection is... Disappears. So those are like focal points I think and like how people like tap into energy and different ways of like perception and I think it's a good exercise to kind of sense like exactly where and it's not like purposely blurring the eyes or anything like that like the eyes will in a gaze will sometimes gently go out of focus and gently focus and stuff and so it's just kind of a natural soft gaze so you can see the hue it's like like, as you can see, that's like a reflection of the screen that's right here, right here in front of me. So it's got this beautiful glow to it. It's definitely something to play with. I know with some meditations, it's reflecting, making the image uh, in a mirror disappear and then having um, something else appear, like an archetype and so on. That can be done uh, through mind work, right? Through meditative work and visualization. 
visualizing a person's reflection disappearing and then having an archetype appear and then having that energy work up through the body and exit through the chest and travel off to the right. And then in that's how one part of the system of implanting archetypes into a person's unconscious mind and then dreaming and going in and actually um, retrieving those archetypes. So whether it's becoming that archetype or it's uh, um, finding it or, or however in the dream world. In here, I'm going to go and get some footage of the outside. <laughs> mm, the sun's rising actually quite a bit right now. So I'm going to try to record the reflection from the obsidian mirror. And then I'm going to show that reflected. There's the mirror right here. And here's the reflection. <clears throat> There's a lot for me to learn of the obsidian mirror. I still, it, there's a lot for me to learn about it and how to use it and everything. Uh, those states of awareness where you kind of blur this place out and, and um, other realms come into focus is, is really what I'm working on um, with that uh, practice. And also with meditation, that's one of the things that I do in meditation is um, when I go into meditation, it's basically like, I'm going to take a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is that I'm going to meditate. I'll have music on most of the time, although I do want to do some that are com like silent. Um, but music is an artistic element. And so artistry, I feel is important. And usually I'll have, you know, music that I have, you know, for meditation. And then what I do is um, I'm going into meditation. So I basically tell myself I'm, I'm in the understanding that everything goes away. So what I do for a living goes away. My societal labels, whatever, everything goes away. It all goes away. Where I'm at goes away. My location, my, um, you know, being a sister, an aunt, uh, whatever. All of that goes away for those 30, 45 minutes. It all blurs. It's not that it doesn't matter. It's that it doesn't matter at that time. Everything gets put on hold. And then when I come out of meditation, I can come back to this realm and all the things that are associated with this realm and things that I have to do and all of this uh, comes back. But during meditation, it all goes away. I just um, leave it. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, I noticed there's that, um, you know, um, entering into altered states and then also with the mirror in terms of focus and, and focusing and having um, tuning in in a manner in which this place blurs. It blurs out. It goes away. And then other states um, reveal themselves. Other states, you, one tunes into other states. So mirror work. There is a, a chance that a person, um, that someone's reflection might change into something else, either another face or something else. So if the idea of it, or if at any point a person feels scared, it's probably not a good, you know, being scared and, and going into stuff like that is probably not a good idea. It is a way of accessing the unconscious mind. A mirror can be positioned so that one is looking at their reflection and there is uh, mirror work that can be done that way. Um, and then there's also a way in which a person can be looking into a mirror, but the mirror isn't reflecting their face. It's just kind of reflecting off into the room and the light is just kind of some somewhat dim indirect lighting. Um, and one can be looking into the mirror as it reflects off somewhere else. So one is looking at like another part of the room and a, the person can get um, relaxed and uh, just as relaxed as possible. And the mirror will start, um, it's a, a place, a tool where a person can start accessing their unconscious mind. And so a person may start seeing images uh, in the mirror. I haven't tried that one. I've tried mirror work in terms of blurring the reflection and visualizing reflections and visualizing like mirrors or bowls of water and working that way. And then now I have the obsidian mirror and one can work. It doesn't have to be an obsidian mirror. One can work with a bowl of water or one can work with um, another type of reflective surface or what's known as like a, re a regular mirror, like a common mirror can be used as well. 
yeah, and so it's a way of accessing the unconscious mind. So a couple of things um, with the unconscious mind, like I said, a face could change into another face. Um, also, um, a person may see things, and sometimes uh, the unconscious mind can be quite uh, vibrant and um, also dramatic, um, can also... Uh, project uh, images that are not always pleasant, right? That the waking mind would consider pleasant. It uses things, uh, imagery and so on, uh, in ways uh, to convey and, and communicate and stuff. And it does it sometimes in ways that our waking mind might find startling or concerning or whatever. That's also something to consider. But that is a way to access the unconscious mind. Now, the images that may appear on that mirror, just so you know, because the unconscious mind, again, isn't necessarily going to be all gentle and whatever. It's the unconscious mind. Some of the things that may be projected could be uh, troubling, startling, uh, you know. We want us to understand that the unconscious mind communicates differently. It doesn't have the kinds of filters that our waking mind has. If someone wants to do it to see if they can scare themselves, that's probably not a good reason to do it. Um, you know, or if they want to do it for another reason, but they're scared to do it, then they shouldn't do it. You don't want to go into something with fear, and you don't want fear being this present energy in your being as you are looking for a way to have your unconscious mind project things to you. So that's uh, one way, you know, people will use um, different things. So they'll use crystal balls. That's another way, right, where they're looking in. Um, so there's different tools for people to access the unconscious mind, cards and so on, where a person is feeling intuitively, they're accessing their unconscious mind. There is the I Ching, um, where you can use coins or you can use sticks. Um, and then you, um, there are readings that are associated with different patterns that emerge. The mirror one is like supposed to be like a screen. It's basically a screen and uh, and the unconscious mind is supposed to play stuff on that screen. So just not do anything that's going to scare you because that's just not really, it's like counter what it is that you want to do. Like you may still be able to access the unconscious mind, but you're afraid. Like there may be enough there where you can access the unconscious, but then you're afraid. And so I want you to do stuff that they're not comfortable with or that scare them. So 